If you have a Lambda function with hard-coded secrets, maybe it's a secret token to some API service, it's safer to not store these secrets in the code. You can use environment variables to extract these keys from your code, and in this video, we'll see how to do that with a Lambda function. But even better, you can encrypt these secrets using AWS KMS, Key Management Service, and then let your Lambda function decrypt them using its permissions. We'll learn how to do it as well. Let's get started by looking at the Lambda function. We have this function that is called Lambda secret, and in this function, we have two variables, secret1 and secret2, and they contain hard-coded secrets. And this function returns a string that prints the secrets back to us. Let's try to run it and see how it works. These are the secrets that are hard-coded in the function. The fact that these secrets are hard-coded in here is a problem for two reasons. The first reason is that it's not secure, because whoever gets access to our code will get access to the secrets. While it can be bad enough that someone got an authorized access to see the code, it will be much worse if they also get access to see the secrets and use them themselves. The second reason this is not the best idea is because if we want to deploy our function across several environments, then on these environments, the secrets will always remain the same. So let's say we want to use a different secret for our testing environment, a different one for the QA environment, and a different one for production. We won't be able to do it if these secrets are hard-coded. To solve both of these problems, we can extract these secrets and turn them into environment variables. If we'll scroll down, we'll see that we have a way to configure environment variables in the console, and currently we have zero variables configured. So let's extract these two secrets into environment variables. I'll copy this value, we'll go to the environment variable section, and add a new variable. We'll call them first secret and second secret. Once we'll save, we can go back to our code and change the way we load these secrets. Now we can use the process.env object in our code, and it will contain the two variables that we define in our environment variables, first secret and second secret. So now let's try to save and then run this function again to see that it works the same as it did before. We still get both of the secrets, secret1 and secret2 returned back to us. The function works exactly the same, but now Every time we deploy this function, we can use the same code, but with different secrets. So that's an improvement over what we had. But now, if we'll scroll down, we'll see that both of the secrets are available in here. And that means that whoever gets access to our Lambda function will also get access to these secrets. And that's not ideal, because maybe we want to give someone access to our function, but we don't want to give them access to the secrets. What we're going to do is encrypt these secrets, and then instead of displaying them here as plain text, they'll be encrypted. In the code of our Lambda function, we'll need to somehow decrypt them. To do that, we're going to use AWS KMS, Key Management Service. Once we'll create a key, we'll use this key to encrypt these values, and then we'll give our Lambda function permission to access this key, and then we'll adjust our Lambda function to be able to decrypt these values using the key. This way, whoever gets access to the Lambda function will see the encrypted values here. And then if they have access to our key that we use to encrypt these values, they'll be able to decrypt them. If not, then they'll just have this encrypted value and they won't be able to use it. Let's encrypt these secrets by going to the KMS console and creating our key first. By the way, this channel is all about short and practical videos teaching how to build backends using AWS. AWS is powerful, cheap, and flexible, but not always the easiest to figure out, and the documentation can be a little overwhelming. So the goal of this channel is to simplify everything in bite-sized videos. If this is something that interests you, make sure to subscribe, because a lot of new videos are coming soon. In the KMS console, we'll create a new key. We'll use a symmetric key. Let's click Next, and we'll call it Video Key. We don't need to define any administrative permissions, 
But on the next step, we do need to define a key usage permission because we want to allow our Lambda function to access this key. So let's go back to the Lambda console. And if we'll scroll up and go to permissions, we'll see the execution role for this function. We need to copy this role because this is the role that we use to define which permissions this Lambda function has and what it can access and what it cannot. To get an overview of roles and AWS IAM in general, which we use to configure permissions, you can check out the video that I linked to below. We'll go back to the KMS console and we'll find our Lambda function by the role and we'll add this function, which means that this function can now access the key that we're creating. Now that our key was created, we can start using it. So let's go back to our Lambda function Let's switch back to configuration and scroll down to the environment variables. We'll click edit. And now if we'll go to encryption configuration, we have the option to enable helpers for encryption and transit. This simply gives us two buttons to encrypt these values using a key we choose. So if we'll hit encrypt and then choose the key that we just created, we'll be able to encrypt this value. So instead of being displayed as plain text, it will be encrypted. If we'll hit the decrypt secret snippet, we can see an example here that shows how to decrypt this code in our Lambda function. We'll use our own code for this because the code that we're given in here is not very flexible. But let's just go over it to see how it looks. First, it uses the AWS SDK. Then it reads the environment variable into an encrypted variable. And it defines a decrypted variable as well. The main idea from the snippet is that when we decrypt these values, we should only do it once per Lambda process. We don't want to decrypt these values every time our Lambda function is called. We only want to do it once when this Lambda is loaded and then save it. In this case, it saves the decrypted value into this decrypted variable. And then every time we need to use this decrypted value, we already have it stored and we don't need to call the KMS service every time. The other interesting thing is that we don't need to specify which key we're using to decrypt these secrets. Since we gave our Lambda function permission to access the key that we use to encrypt these values, KMS will automatically know to use the secret when we decrypt them. So all we have to do is call KMS decrypt and then we'll have access to our secret in plain text and we can use it in our function. But as you can see, this snippet is designed to work only with the single variable. We have an encrypted variable and a decrypted variable. So we can't use it to load several variables. And also we want to make it a little nicer. We'll use our own code. And this code will also be available in an open source GitHub repository, which I link to in the description of this video. So for now, let's close it and encrypt our secret. As you can see, our secret is no longer displayed, but instead we have this encrypted value. Let's also encrypt our second secret. We'll save, and now both of our secrets are no longer displayed in the console. Now we have these two encrypted values. So whoever has access to the console can no longer read the secrets. Now they also need to have access to our KMS key in order to be able to decrypt these values and give us the secrets that we stored. The problem is that our Lambda function still doesn't know how to decrypt these values. If we'll try to run it now, it will give us back the encrypted values. And that's not good because that's not the secrets that we want to use. What we want to do is adjust our Lambda function to be able to decrypt these values and get the same secrets as before. Now we'll need to find some way to decrypt this environment variables. We'll need some sort of a function. Let's call it decrypt secret. And this function should be able to decrypt the secret and then cache it for subsequent requests. Instead of passing the actual value, we'll pass the name of the secret. We'll need to use a wait here because this function will need to make a request to KMS. So now this function will take the name of the secret. It will check the cache if this value exists or not. If it does, it will return back to us. And if not, it will make a request to AWS KMS. So let's see how this function should be implemented. 
In the description of this video, I link to the repository that contains the demo code for this video. And if we'll go to the utils file, we'll see the implementation of such a decrypt secret function. Let's copy it to our Lambda function. We'll create a new utils file. We'll copy our code. And now let's import this function in our handler. Now let's go over the function to see how it is implemented. We use the AWS SDK, we initiate it here, and then we define a decrypted object. This object will hold the decrypted values, so we won't have to call KMS each time we want to decrypt a secret. We pass the secret name, and then we check. If the secret name exists in the decrypted object already, we will log it to the console that we're returning the cached value, and then we'll return the decrypted value back from the function. Otherwise, if it does not exist yet, we will log that we're going to decrypt this value, and then we'll try to decrypt it using KMS. Again, note that we don't need to specify the name of the key that we created, because KMS will be able to know it automatically by the permissions. Finally, we store the decrypted value in our decrypted object and return it back from the function. Now let's try to run our function and see how it works and that the values are actually cached. So now we actually get the decrypted values like before, first secret and second secret. Our Lambda function knows how to take the environment variables and then decrypt them using the Lambda's permissions. And we also see some entries to our log. Since this is the first time we call this Lambda function, it creates a new process and it's going to decrypt the first secret and the second secret. But if we'll call the Lambda function again, since this function already has a process running, it will return the cached value. It doesn't need to call KMS again because the decrypted values are already stored in our decrypted object. We started the video with secrets which were hard-coded in our code. We then saw how to extract them to environment variables. And finally, we saw how to decrypt them using a key from AWS KMS and then how to decrypt them as well. Now, if someone has access to our code base, or even our Lambda function, they still won't be able to know the secrets that we use in the code. Unless, of course, we'll leave them as comments. If you learned something from this video, please hit the like button so this video will reach more people. And if you would like to get notified when I upload more videos about building backends using AWS, please subscribe to this channel.